You're listening to the Urban Sports Team, part of Empire Media, EmpireMedia.com, and it is time for HBCU Corner with the Urban Sports Team. And Wale, we had this brother on the show before, but it was part of our D.C. area basketball series. So now we're excited to have him back as part of our HBCU Corner segment. And he is, of course, none other than the head men's basketball coach of Howard University, Kenneth L. Blakeney. What's happening, my friend? What's up, fellas? How y'all doing today? We're doing good. How about yourself? Man, I'm doing terrific, man. Thank you for having me on the show. Well, it's like, so what we typically do here, so like Ray mentioned, we had you on, uh, you know, for our DMV basketball segment, but this is now we're talking about HBCUs and what Ray and I typically do on here, we, we kind of love homecoming. You know, Howard, we're talking about HU, the HU. <laughs> like, so first off, we know Howard's a Mecca. I mean, we know this. We're not going to play it all. We went to Eastern Shore. We're not going to play it all. Uh, but how was Howard's homecoming this year? October 22nd. Ooh. <laughs> I, got, I got the date right on the tip of my tongue, guys. <laughs> Come on through. Pull up, as the young kids would say, right? <laughs> I know. I know that's right. <laughs> Pull up. It's, it's, it's exciting, man. I had a chance. I just came from Atlanta. I was down at the UA event. And while I was down there, I uh, there's certainly a heavy... HU alumni section that's down there and had a chance to spend some time with them. They actually had a, a HU alumni event that I was uh, I had a chance to go through and everybody's so excited about what's going on right now with HU, obviously our spring sports with track and field, um, softball, you know, doing stuff on the national level, our women's basketball program, winning it, going to the NCAA tournament, you know, our swim program, our golf program, our athletic director, Mr. Kerry Davis has done an incredible job. And I'm really excited to see Coach Larry Scott's uh, football team this year, man. And he is a class dude and I know he is gonna rip it this year. So I'm excited about HU, I'm excited about our sports and looking forward to seeing both of you at homecoming on October 28th, 22nd, excuse me. October 22nd. Now, I want to say real quick, the last time we had a Howard coach on, it was Coach Scott. And we got in trouble for calling Howard the Mecca. So, some people came at us for that, which is interesting. <laughs> but it's all good, though. Here's, here's the thing, real quick, because as I think about that, of course, Diddy on the awards, he, he announced a big donation. What was your initial reaction to that? Well, I had done a podcast probably around a week or two before that with Jason over at Sports uh, Illustrated. And the whole conversation was about NIL. And he set up a scenario that talked about what if there was a donor or what if there was an alum that, you know, would invest, you know, that kind of NL, NIL money into an HBCU and he at Diddy. So I don't know if it's just a coincidence or if he actually got the message, but we are grateful uh, you know, with with Diddy's partnership, obviously he is an alum, uh, and we're so proud of what he's doing and what he's done for so many people and for our culture. Uh, so to have him, you know, continue to be uh, a guy that has given back to Howard and uh, to see him shine, man, to see see Brother Love doing his thing is nothing but you know what HU is about and how our our alums are prospering after they leave the university. It is Howard. I mean, like, like Ray, it's still the Mecca, you know? Let's keep it a buck, Ray. And we think of Howard, like we think I like- I don't want to start no arguments. We got I know, we think of like a different HBC. world. When I think of Howard, I think of a different world. I feel like it was based on like Howard on the load of me. I don't know, that's, that's just that's, me though. That's you, that's you and me, that's how sweet, brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, coach, we'll get right into like, you know, the program itself. Um, you made a lot of pro a progress within the program. Last season, Howard was, second in the MEAC and during this season, almost beat Notre Dame who went to the tournament. Um, how happy are you with the direction of the program? I, I love with the direction that we're going. Uh, we've gotten a chance now to get more of our young men in and uh, guys that we really feel understand who I am as a person, who I am as a man, who I am as a coach. And, you know, young men that probably were overlooked that have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder guys that are looking for true basketball opportunities. You know, when you talk about Howard, um, there's a history and culture there with our academic side that hasn't, uh, that, that it, you know, as we talk about it just briefly, I mean, it, it is 
unparalleled. Like it, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, you can put us up with any university in the country. We got people in the White House. We got people on Capitol Hill. We have people on the financial sector. We have authors. We have, you know, educators. We have lawyers. We have entertainment. Like, you know, Howard has never had a consistent men's basketball program that has yeah. had the, the, you know, continued success or consistent success. So to try to follow up what we were able to do last year and to take the breakthrough year of last year and now see if we can build off of that is incredible. I think we might've lost six games by either one possession uh, and maybe like another game that was, you know, a four point game. So we're right there, man, at doing some really unique and special things. And I think, you know, our young men taking uh, the experience of what they had last year and building on, on that coupled with the new guys that we have uh, coming into the program, I, I think we have a chance to be pretty good. And almost beating Notre Dame. Did that bring, give your team a little bit more confidence during that season, during the season, during last season? Well, I, I just, you know, I want to start with like, you know, Notre Dame coming in to play uh, a mid-major or whatever level people consider us at their own place is unheard of. It's true. Uh, Very true. You know, so I, I have all the love and respect for Coach Mike Bray and Notre Dame for wanting to do something like this. And they've, uh, you know, it, it's worked out so well for them. And the, the feedback was so positive that they're playing an HBCU this year at Notre Dame. Uh, in football. So uh, it, it's been well received. I, I think that, you know, our guys knew that they were good. And, uh, you know, it, it's having that opportunity to showcase themselves against a Georgetown, against a Villanova, against a Notre Dame, to beat Bradley on the road uh, by 20. Uh, you know, it, it was all part of our our program learning how to grow, learning how to win. So now can we couple that and take the next step? So, you know, I mean, you know, 2022, 23 season, right? So it's almost here. Um, how is this team, how is this team looking, you know, going to the season and what's your outlook on it? Yeah, I, I think we got a chance to be a really good defensive team. Um, that's what I'm really excited about right now. I think in the past, we've been an okay defensive team. But we haven't been a team that has limited our opponents to one shot. And, you know, I love our length. We have guys that are 6'7", 6'8", 6'9", 6'10", with a lot of versatility where we have some interchangeable parts where defensively we can be a little bit more, I think, diverse in how we defend. Uh, we can switch a lot more. We can play ball screens a lot more. I think we can do a lot more with pressing. So I'm excited about our team, especially defensively. Uh, you know, in my first couple of years here, we've always been one of the teams at the top of all of the offensive categories. So to now have a chance to couple that with really good defense and more length, which I hope translates to more or better rebounding, um, you know, I think it's going to give us an opportunity to, to save more possessions so we have a better chance on the offensive end to continue to score at a higher clip. Coach, uh, this is a two part one. Uh, so one, you're building something like you're talking about, something great. And you still play a bird gymnasium, which is a little on the smaller side. I've had a coach come up to me say, I want to see the how a men's basketball program grow out of that arena. But you also, you got the camera background. So does the arena really matter? And is that part of your vision? Also, going back to our discussion prior to uh, us coming on, you talked about some Howard guys that are playing in NBA Summer League right now. Kyle Foster being one. Talk about him a little bit and the guys you're excited about that are currently out there balling in NBA Summer League. Yeah, I had the two great questions, and thank you for asking. I think, like, you know, I had a whole discussion with someone that uh, said the same thing. Like, hey, I, you know, you guys are doing so much. What's, the, what's kind of the plan of the arena? And I was like, you know, I played at Duke, right? And it's kind of the same thought process is like, if we can make that a home court where we feel like it's a competitive advantage, why change it? Agreed. Mm. You know, we can go down and play where, I think it's called the Go-Go's Arena, where the uh, G League Washington Wizard team plays and, uh, and, the, and our, our, our lady team, the Mystics. 
Um, we can play our games there, but now, you know, for our students to get from Howard University over to the Go Go's Arena, you know, at a time during the day where you may run into some traffic, you know, I don't think we're being fair to them because it's going to be an hour trip over to the Go Go's Arena. It's going to be a two hour game. It's probably going to be another 30 to hour long trip getting home. Now you're talking about three and a half to four hours out of their day where they can be studying, they can be having some student activities, they can potentially be working, or they can be just, you know, interacting to develop friendships that can position them for things in life uh, that can be beneficial down the road. So I love our, 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 our humble uh, arena. I, I think it's perfect. I, I, you know, one of the things that we talked about uh, with Mr. Kerry Davis, our athletic director is maybe potentially putting in bleachers uh, across from our benches, the, the home and away benches. Right. So our students now can be on the court. And I think become even more part of the game and the environment. Uh, you know, there's, there's young men and women that uh, I think have become even more involved in the Duke University program because they had such a positive experience of being a Cameron crazy. Uh, now they're donors. Now they're mm. taking young men in for internships. Now they're taking young men and they're being mentors. Maybe there's some students that are going to Howard and because of having such a positive experience attending Howard University men's basketball games, they come back and they want to contribute in some kind of way. Uh, that would be such a, uh, I think, a fulfilling and round welded, round well, uh, you know, experience for them as students and, and then as alums. And, and the coach, second question, yeah, about oh, guys in the league. <laughs> yeah, the second question about guys in the league, it's incredible that we have three young men right now that have donned the Howard University jersey that are out playing in the LA Summer League. Um, you know, Kyle Foster, McCord Maker, and RJ uh, Cole that ended up transferring to, to UConn. But, you know, I think that's a huge testament to, you know, our program and what we're building. Uh, I never coached RJ. He uh, left before I got here, but he'd done such a tremendous job of, you know, positioning himself for an opportunity to go play, uh, you know, further and coaching and recruiting McCormaker Maker and now Kyle Foster. Um, you know, it, it's, it's kind of fascinating to see because you, you know, you look around at the landscape of other universities and some of those universities that are power five universities can't say that they got three of their former players in the LA summer league. So uh, we're lucky, we're blessed, we're fortunate. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing those young men continue to have more opportunities as the LA summer league is moving on and going into training camp. It's a testament to your work coach. It really is. Um, also, in, just in terms of like the, you know, some of the current players you have going into the 22, 23 season, who are some of the players uh, should folks who are watching this uh, be keen on uh, looking at, you know, keeping their eyes on? Well, we have two guys that are returning from our program that, uh, you know, were all conference players last year. And that's Elijah Hawkins, our 5'10 point guard from DeMatha Catholic High School. He's a Washingtonian, so grew up not too far from Howard University. And Steve Settle, another DeMatha Catholic High School alum uh, that is – from PG County, uh, those two guys were both second team all league for us uh, last year. So, you know, we, we should start with those guys. You know, Elijah is a guy that I think he might've ended top 10 in the country in assists and top five in steals as a freshman. Um, so his path, man, is really bright and I'm excited to have him be the quarterback of our team. Uh, you know, great thing about Elijah, like this summer, he's doing an internship on Capitol Hill. Oh, wow. And uh, nice. this week with his internship, he's going to be at the January 6th hearings. So we're excited about that and his mm. growth and the exposure that he's getting off the court. We really know that it's going to help him uh, long term with the relationships and networking and you know, that's the reason you come to Howard, right? And Steve Settles has dedicated, Settle has dedicated himself this summer to putting on some pounds and working on his game. Um, this is the first season that Steve has played 
a complete season since he was in the eighth grade. So, you know, it's been about six years, man, since he's actually played in this many games consistently and been a part of it in a way where, you know, he's had got a major role. Uh, Steve is 6'11". He's up to 185 pounds. When I got him, he was 145 pounds. So we're excited about, you know, those two guys coming back. Um, we have Jelani Williams, who is our grad transfer that's coming in from the University of Penn. Jelani is a Washingtonian and uh, from the DMV. Um, he played at Sidwell Friends and he's a team takeover guy. So, you know, we're really excited about what he can bring to the table. Uh, last night, he scored 27 points down at the Kenner League was his first time down there playing. So, you know, we really feel like his leadership being older, uh, his ability to, you know, be versatile, a Swiss Army knife. He can play multiple positions. Um, his basketball IQ. I'm so excited about Jelani. Uh, we have Reese Brown, who transferred in from UNLV. He is 6'9", uh, a pogo stick with a 41-inch vertical. Um, he is a little bit of a Swiss Army knife as well. His defensive versatility should be something that really helps us a whole lot, along with his ability to rebound. Um, he's a guy that, you know, can be really versatile on the offensive end as well. Uh, he's a really good catch and shoot guy. He can put pressure and get downhill and attack the basket. The one thing I love about him is that his IQ is off the charts as well. His ability to make plays for others or his ability to be an unselfish cutter in our offense. Uh, we got Kobe Dixon, another grad transfer in from, uh, from Cornell. Kobe led their team at 6'9", 250 in assists. So now we have another guy who's a willing playmaker, a big body, a guy that can do some damage down on the low block. Um, but his playmaking ability for us is something that is really important because we don't have a lot of guys that can just break a dude down and go get a basket. We have to be unselfish and play at a point with where our IQ can, you know, you know, make plays for others. We have Shaheem Odom. Shai at one time was a top 20 player in the country when he was a ninth and 10th grader. Uh, he transferred from his high school uh, in Boston out to Sierra Canyon. So he was on that famous Sierra Canyon team with Bronny James and mm -hmm. all of those high major guys. And Shai for us, you know, you think Draymond Green, you know, at six, 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 seven. He's a guy that can make plays. He's a guy that's athletic and bouncy. He's a big body guy. When I saw him the other day, I walked into the gym and I was like, yo, who's that grown man down there? Because <laughs> <laughs> his, his shoulders are as wide as a refrigerator. His body is jacked. And, uh, you know, he's, he hasn't played a college game yet. He's just stepping on a college kind of campus. So he understands how to play. He knows how to get easy baskets for himself easy baskets for his teammates. And then he's got a toughness and a rebounding uh, gear about him that, that is also helpful. Um, so at the core, we got a lot of guys. I'm excited about Jordan Wood. Jordan is a 6'9 kid out of San Antonio, Texas. This will be his second year. He didn't play, obviously, too many games his COVID year. Uh, he played some games for us this year, did a good job, probably averaged three points a game. But Jordan has been training for a marathon. And uh, my thing with him is that I said, I don't care if you make a shot or do anything basketball this year. I, I want you to go challenge yourself in a way where, you know, the stuff we do on the basketball court becomes easy. And, uh, you know, so far, so good, man. He's up to like 16 miles. Uh, I think he's going to run in the Marine Corps mar Marathon in August uh, in D.C. So, he is committed to doing all the things he needs to do this summer to make himself a, a, a terrific basketball player. It's kind of interesting because when I'm, you know, I had a chance to work at the NBA combine and the one team, the one guy that teams consistently asked about was Jordan Wood. So, you know, he's on team's radar uh, and now it's for him to have his breakthrough, which I think he's having this summer. So I'm excited about our guys. Amazing. Amazing. Coach, I mean, you, you already mentioned, I was going to go a different question, but I'm going to have to, I'm going to, have to pivot. Um, you talked about your experience at the NBA. I mean, you talked about being, being at the NBA combine. How was that experience? 
It was unreal. Um, it was unreal. Our first day there, we have a coaches meeting and it's headed by uh, coach Jim Boyle, Boylan, who was the former coach at the Chicago Bulls. And he is as sharp and as good as, as you know, I've ever been around. And it was like, okay, here's your playbook. Uh, know these 20 plays by tomorrow morning. <laughs> so uh, it was intense. They were unbelievable in their, uh, I think, willingness to allow us to grow and coach and learn and teach. Um, you know, to have a, I was nervous, to be honest with you, because I was like, I don't want to be responsible just meeting these young guys uh, you know, for anything that may go right or wrong these next couple of days with their career. Um, so I, I didn't want to mess anything up, but, you know, it's basketball, right? And uh -huh. these young men want to be coached. They want to be led. They want to have structure. And they did an unbelievable job, man. So hats off to the NBA and uh, everybody that, you know, took part of the combine that allowed, you know, our university, Howard University and Morgan State, both our men's and women's staff to be a part of that. Uh, you know, the NBA did a terrific job with that. Wow, a lot of information coming out. You got a big team coming back next year too. I the know, MEAC is gonna be <laughs> sick, man, I'm excited. I'm so glad Howard's staying in the MEAC too. I had to throw that in there, I apologize. But I've seen you this summer. I mean, hearing the dedication to your team, you taking pictures with the VP and stuff. You, you just got a lot going on, but you still just here to end up just information you're giving us about each player. Like, it's amazing how you're still able to dedicate that amount of time. Um, you also had the time to get back to Duke uh, for retirement. Talk about that experience, also playing Carolina at the time. <laughs> Was that purposeful? And how did you feel about how Coach K's career ended against Carolina? It's just like, how did that happen? <laughs> Ray's a Carolina fan, FYI. I, 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 I hear a little, I go hear a little Carolina homer. Oh, used, used to be a Carolina fan. Let me I grew up a Carolina fan, but I'm an alum of the, U, of the University of Maryland. I said used, so, to, be. I said used to be, bro. I so, said used I'm, to be. <laughs> listen. <laughs> no, it was, look, I, I think, you know, to have a chance to go down and celebrate Coach K, his accomplishments, um, the man he is, you know, all the things that he's done for every player that's played at Duke was awesome. Um, when we first got there, Tyler Thornton, who's on our staff as an assistant coach, he's a Duke alum, and I drove down together. We had a uh, off weekend, so we were able to get down for that, for that game. And uh, there was a room where all the alums that I've ever played for coach was there. And the thing that kind of, you know, gave me chill bumps and was so warming to me is that, you know, you talk about the brotherhood, every last dude in that room, and there were a hundred people in that room, knew what the heck was going on with Howard University men's basketball team. Mm. That was so awesome. I mean, it really was one of those moments where I, I got emotional because you have guys that are Hall of Famers, you know, all-time greats talking Howard basketball. Like, so, you know, and they were so proud of, you know, the strides that we've taken and where the program is headed. Um, that was really cool. And then, you know, to be there in the hallway, they lined, you know, all hundred of us in the hallway on both sides. and to see everybody like a kid in a candy store, you know, taking their cell phones out and shooting videos of one another and pictures before, you know, we even got out the tunnel. It was like, you know, it was electric, man. And everybody was connecting. Everybody was happy. Everybody was excited to, to go out and celebrate Coach K's, you know, last game in Cameron. And then you line up on the court and, you know, the Cameron crazies are going crazy. You know, and, and Coach K walks out and the place just ignites and erupts. You're like, wow, you know, like, all right. Um, and, and I think, you know, I, I may be against the, the grain here, but I, I just thought what a tough situation that, you know, those young guys were in in that game and, and a lot, honestly, throughout the year. Yeah. Um, such a young team where you talk about five guys that all got drafted, right? And 
they're you know high level players, but they're still freshmen. Uh, for them to to be in that 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 game, which is such a special game, but it, it was the biggest event you know in college basketball outside of the national championship game last year. Um, I think it was tough. I, I and I think they you know it, right wrong and different. It was just a, a really difficult time. Uh, I think at that moment for those guys, but I think they did the best that they could and they came back and, you know, got to the championship game in the ACC uh, tournament and then made a run to the final four. Like that's, that's a pretty good way to, to cap off coach K's career. Uh, unfortunately, I know he wanted to win and, and, and walk out with a chip, but to, to be one of the last four teams playing uh, that's crazy, man. What a, what a incredible career unprecedented probably will never see anything like it again in college basketball man he's 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 the best i'm not going to ask this next question Wally. i said i was i'm gonna change it up i just want to say though you know you played for morgan wooten as well just two legendary coaches and you got the dematha pipeline working right now it's great it was great to see quinn cook there as well uh, for coach k's retirement so i just want to put that out there just you know just seeing you guys man from from here you know there and, and what you're building at Howard is, is so dope. But with, with Howard being an HBCU, of course we want HBCU athletics to grow beyond just that label of it's being HBCU. We just want it to be great college athletic programs, but still it is what it is. A lot of attention on HBCU is what you know in any way. So what do you see the future of your program, what you're building with all the attention you plan on NBA All-Star Weekend, just how are you gonna grow just your program based on all the, the love the HBCUs are getting right now? Yeah, well, it was always been my plan that, you know, we need our program to take a look at how Georgetown University was built and what Coach John Thompson did. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, it, that part is really, really, really important. Uh, I think Coach Thompson started in 1972 and how he grew that program you know, with the formula of using local DC products, DMV products to, you know, turn that thing into what it, it, it became uh, while he was there and what it is right now. Um, so that's kind of been the formula with getting guys from great high schools, getting guys from great programs, getting guys that have already been coached, uh, you know, here in the DMV. You, you look at it, I don't know what the time period is, but over the last maybe 15 to 20 years, we've had probably more division one players come out of our area and more division uh, and more pros come out of our area than any other place in the country. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, to see guys now in the front office with Troy Weaver, Keith Bogans is on the bench and, you know, David Vanderpool in Brooklyn, to see different folks representing all different layers in the NBA, man, it's such a dope thing to see. So, you know, what Coach Thompson did with making home his base in terms of bringing the best talent, the best people, the best students to Georgetown, we're trying to do the same thing here. So Georgetown is certainly one of those universities that we're looking at or that we looked at um, to look at a Gonzaga and what they've done in the West Coast Conference, along with St. Mary's, along with the San Diego State, along with the Loyola Chicago, mid-major programs that have stayed in their conferences uh, and now are national powers is kind of the vision for me, to be honest. Uh, I, I look at those programs all the time from the way they play to their venues, to their branding, and to see if we can take bits and pieces from each as we're trying to ignite what we're doing here at Howard University. It's, it's, it's crazy that you use that example of Gonzaga because um, Norfolk, we had Norfolk State's coach, um, Robert Jones, on, as well before, and he, he used them as an example too. It's like why, if Gonzaga can do it, any school within the HBCU pl platform can do it as well. Like, and just like you said, like, look how it started. It started from basically the grassroots. They, they were mid-major, supposedly a mid-major. Now they're like one of the power, you know, power teams of, of college basketball. And look at the kind of kids they're recruiting now compared to what they were recruiting back then. It's, it's, it's definitely possible and capable. Um, but Ray mentioned in terms of popularity and in terms of the trend and how HBCUs are now becoming are garnering, garnering more attention. Is that helping with recruiting? Yeah, I, I think more so, you know, there's a lot of young men that are taking a look at HBCUs 
I think, you know, where our country is now after three years of, you know, all the social justice, you know, that has happened, George Floyd, um, and the emphasis on HBCUs, uh, along with, I think, what Coach Deion Sanders is doing down at Jackson State, you know, what Coach Rob Jones is doing in Norfolk, you know, what, you know, I just think there's an opportunity right now that we really need to take a, a take a you know strong look at. But when you're looking at that and you're talking about that, there's other factors that come into play as well now. Uh-huh. You know, universities and where we are right now is, you know, NILs, right? Yeah. And that's that's a that's where we are in our game. Uh, a facilities race, like a race to see who can get the best facilities. Um, you know, uh, right, wrong, or indifferent. You know, those things are things that young men are asking about, things that they're talking about. Uh, so there are things that we need to be aware of. Like, can we develop and build our infrastructure in a way where a young man doesn't feel like they're compromising anything by coming to Howard? Mm-hmm. Um, can we, you know, can our young men, can we build a program to the point where we have visibility and they have relevancy now to take advantage of the NIL situations? Um, all of those things are things as we're building this out and we're thinking about the vision, you know, we're taking in consideration. So, yeah, it, you know, there is that momentum, but we need to be ready and prepared to take advantage of those opportunities. So young men that are probably top hundred or below, you know, will really take us seriously. Well, coach, this has been a great interview, but before we let you go, we typically ask any coach within the HBCU this particular question. What does coaching at an HBCU mean to you? Well, for me, it's home, man. You know, I, I, it's, it's everything about home. DC's home for me. Howard's home for me. Um, to have a chance to work at an HBCU that is a top 75 school in the country academically that, you know, represents all the, you know, what would our country be and what would our culture be without Howard? So true. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> that, that's one of those. I can't the mic. You dropped the mic on that one. Like, you did. You just dropped the mic. You did. You <laughs> sure did. <laughs> you, know, so it, you know, seriously, what, what, would, what would our culture and our country be without Howard? Look at the influences. Honestly, look at the influences. Yeah. You're so right. So for us, man, it, it's, you know, look, I, I, like, who would imagine me being a teacher at one of the top universities in the country? Like, that's such an honor mm-hmm. to have a chance to work with young men uh, and help them grow and mature to become a Howard man. You know, like I said, I was in Atlanta. I was at this event, you know, having a chance to meet Howard men and, uh, you know, hearing their stories about life after Howard and the things that they're doing. I mean, it's, you know, so it's a, it's a neat place. I'm very honored to be able to do it. Um, I'm very fortunate to have great young men that understand the value of Howard and they want the exposure. They want to have that practical experience. They want to have that resume experience and they want to have a Howard experience. I'm lucky. Definitely. And you always have homecoming for, for a recruiting process. You, know what I mean? you have Howard homecoming for recruiting. It's easy. October 22nd. <laughs> Well, Coach, thanks for being on the show. Is there anything you would like to add? We're good, man. I'm just grateful for you guys, man. I love what you're doing. You guys are ripping it. Continued success, man. And anytime you need me, just holler. Thank you so much, Coach. We appreciate you. Thank you.